Markets around the world are up and yields are coming down, but the Federal Reserve says it's still too early for us to claim that rate cuts are happening. Meanwhile, other members are saying we're basically there. So who do we believe in a sea of mysteries? Well, today we talk about the dark pool data that's running the markets right now, the sentiment, and of course, the history leading into December and 2024. With gold futures soaring to record closes, we need to talk about what's going on with that metal as well. So let's discuss the S&P 500 key levels, why the Magnificent 7 is so weak right now and what it could mean for your portfolio and trades, crypto's rise to a new high, and of course, the rotation that we expected to occur. Massive moves happening through so many sectors in the market. Is it the beginning or is this the end? Join us as our special weekend show covering stocks, commodities, and cryptos starts right now. Well, welcome back, everyone, to The Daily Show, where we talk about markets around the world, including macro lead indicators and the hottest charts. My name's Tom. We've been running this show for over three years. And if you like anything to do with markets, remember to subscribe and smash that like button. So as we suspected, a rotation through the week outside of tech and into other markets did occur. And there were some really nice sectors that did very, very well over the last five days. And we'll talk about that later on, including our favorite here on the channel for the last couple of months, metals and gold. But let's discuss what's going on with fear and greed because greed is hitting into the almost extreme levels. 67, we're almost at 75. And of course, we'll be updating you when some of these things change. Speaking of updates, it's the weekend. So that means that we have our next edition of the VIP free weekly newsletter coming out. We're looking at five charts that define the week ahead. Make sure to subscribe. Link's in the comments down below. It's as easy as name, email address, and you're signed up. Let's discuss history now. What goes on in December when we have a pretty serious year such as we have? A very bullish market into November. Well, as it turns out, Traditionally, we get a very shallow pullback into the middle somewhere of December, and then we tend to see rallies. What does best in these rallies will show you very soon, at least statistically, but it's an interesting time for markets nonetheless. So everyone's pricing in rate cuts, and you can see here the expectations of each one of the Fed basically meetings moving forward and what the expectations are for yield cuts. So at this stage, it looks like the cuts could be coming as soon as some period around, you would say, maybe the middle or the first quarter to second quarter of 2024. So we'll be watching for that, but that's what the markets are pricing in. And do remember, the markets are already pricing in a lot of these rate cuts. So what this could be is a buy the rumor, as we've discussed, and sell the fact. And you'll see some stats moving forward on what tends to occur. Some positive news for traders out there moving into next week and the weeks ahead is home builders. Big movement out, huge coil, and it crushed to the upside. When that broke through, you saw everything in the market just absolutely flying. And of course, home builders is set to potentially make a new high coming up soon. Another one we've brought up many, many times before has been bullish percent index. We kind of speculated that we were moving towards 70 on November the 15th. Well, it looks like we have been moving towards 70 and really a reading above 70 could continue a bit of a melt up here that may go into all time highs by the end of December. I think we need to be aware that this could occur even if you're feeling bearish on the markets and that it's not necessarily a bad thing if you are a bear. Now, I'm sure some people are saying, well, it's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, sure. But remember this stat, and this is a great one. Recessions are painful for equities and hardly discounted in advance. In the median recession-related drawdowns, 81% of losses happened during the actual recession and not in the six months prior. Now, if you're thinking about it, remember, recessions tend to show their heads when the rates actually get cut, not during the pivot, not during the speculation, when the cut actually happens. Here are some of the drawdowns. We've discussed this stat quite a few times. And remember, the Federal Reserve will not be rate cutting out of the goodness of their heart. So how long do these recessions go for? How brutal are they? Well, on average, you can see they are pretty brutal. And I'm not sure if we're going to expect something like that. But even during some of the softer ones, we usually go into corrective territory. Remember, JP Morgan just came out the other day and they've been 
relatively good recently, I guess, in comparison to some other banks. And they've said that during 2024, they expect negative 8%. And that's almost that correction territory. Here's the performance in a different way. And you can see here some really nice kind of illustrations of what happens, especially around the 180 days. And it will be worthwhile keeping that in mind. So could we be going into it? Well, of course, everyone's talking about the VIX and volatility right now. And we've got some dark pool data to show you that someone out there is speculating on an increase in, you would say, some kind of VIX increase, some kind of fear increase moving forward. Now, it could be a day, it could be a week, it could be possibly even next year, but there are some speculations starting to come in the VIX. Historically, though, when we go down to a VIX this low, the stats are pretty positive. You can see six months later, generally positive, 12 months later, generally positive. Back into line of a normal year, although I expect 2024 to be up, down, and all around. Some things to watch in 2024, the US dollar will be key. We'll look at that later on today's video. This is what's happened since the dollar started falling off. And you can really see silver, gold, the Qs, treasuries, everything. It's been a risk on across the board going through markets. So let's talk now why this market might even drive higher. So we started to see a little bit of a pullback in terms of the amount of people that were bearish. This is retail positions, okay? So Effectively, we have an 86% bearish read in what's going on with the Dow. That means 86% of retail open positions are effectively going bearish. And you can kind of see why the squeezes have been coming through. Dow's going ballistic. We've also seen gold doing really, really well. This is actually a very low reading for bulls in terms of gold. Gold hits between 60 and 80% most of the time. So you can really see that there is a huge amount of people still going against the markets. And this is contrary to, of course, what the sentiment reports are showing, which is that everybody is bullish. So everyone's bullish, yet unfortunately, when it comes to leverage contracts, everybody's going short, at least from a retail side. And you can kind of see why these markets can do this for a little bit longer and then usually have those kind of better pullbacks later on. Remember, the one we expect in December still to this point could be relatively shallow. Will it be horrible? Well, we'll have to find out. Certainly, the insight is based on technology stocks. Don't believe it is. We all think maybe technology is expensive. Insiders don't believe it is. I would say a lot of this is thanks to AI and their ability to see forward projections of how much cost cutting they could potentially do, especially on wages, I'm sure. And you can see that previous times, insiders have been this bullish on their own stocks. We've tended to see relatively good returns over the next 12 months. What about Cyber Monday? Did we see a drawdown in the amount of sales this year? Well, it doesn't look like anyone was feeling it or credit cards were getting out of control because we just saw a new record for Cyber Monday as sales hit new records on big discounts. And I will say this year was a little bit better. We actually saw some discounting, which was kind of nice if you are a retail participant, but no one was seeing, no one had any chill when it comes to buying stuff in Black Friday and Cyber Monday. What did you buy? Let us know in the comments down below if you did buy anything cool, uh, maybe for a Christmas present, maybe for yourself. Bitcoin halving rallies, do remember this chart. I won't go into it too much, but generally, if we do expect the halving to be real, Bitcoin will do better after the halving event, and that happens in 2024 early. New listings of homes up a little bit year on year. We're starting to see maybe a little bit of weakness cracking through the retail kind of home market. Again, I don't think it's shocking at this stage. If you want to know where the horror show is in, in housing, it's got to be office buildings. They are absolutely horrendous. But again, I, with the kind of work from home balance starting to remove itself a little bit, at least here in Australia, maybe it's all going to stabilize. At this point, I would look at that, but I don't think commercial is going to necessarily be kind of the straw that breaks the camel's back or whatever the saying is. I don't think that's the one. We're really looking at the Federal Reserve to actually put a rate cut in. And of course, we're going to have to see some of these lead indicators come through. So we've been talking about this one here, which is the Russell 2000. I've been discussing the seasonal pattern that tends to happen. And that is a strong kind of mid-December into the end of the year. Well, has mid-December come early? We just saw a big breakout in the Russell over the last 24 hours and some small stocks were doing really well, including one that I've been looking at for a little while, which was biotech and of course, clean energy, solar, those types of ones. 
Best four month streak for the Russell tends to be this period of time and it usually outperforms the rest of the market. Again, will it do so? Well, last year it didn't. This year, it certainly could. So yeah, stats are stats. If you see the right price actions going in your favor, maybe that gives you a bit of an advantage. Do remember central banks around the world have been starting to rate cut across the board, really making it pretty likely that we have seen the pivot. And I think we're already pricing in like a huge portion of it. So just remember a lot of this pivot, a lot of these rate cuts are being priced in fairly heavily in the markets. So we talked about dark pool data and we know that these big tech stocks are not looking like they're presenting exceptional returns over the near term. Amazon, big trade that just happened. We also saw, of course, treasuries coming up to that high, big trades happening. One of my favorites, Microsoft was doing it as well. And another print on another VIX index. So we've basically got a huge amount of treasury trades after what was a pretty nice run. We've got about 10 to 15 of the major tech stocks literally getting huge trades on them all at these highs. Little wonder why the market is rotating the way it is. Let's move over. So what's happening in the options world? Well, let's have a look at the volume because this was surprising. Huge volumes coming through. 46 million versus 39.2 average, 59% calls. One of the highest call readings we've seen in some time and 27% of all of these positions in single legs were retail. So it looks like we're going out in force and I would say retail are probably now buying a pretty large amount of calls based on the sentiment we've seen running around. I think that the situation is switching a little bit into everyone going bullish. Some of my favorites recently have been doing really well. Enphase had some nice activity on it. Really liked the trade there. Thought it had a great base in it. And a lot of the bases on some quality stocks were running through. And when I mean quality stocks, a lot of the small quality stocks started to really rally through the last session. We'll look at those a little bit later on. Let's talk rotation. Gold, five-day, one of the best. But regional banks had the best session. I mean, this literally was nowhere. Now 6.89%. And look at this. Semiconductors only well, negative actually, negative 3.39%. And, and even tech was doing pretty poorly through the last couple of sessions, only up 0.63. When we look at the Friday session, look at this, down on almost tech communications almost, they're all basically flat as attack. And look at regional banks, regional banks, TAN and solar. So what these ones tell you, and this one here, is that risk was on in a big way. And it was all on those ones that basically companies that, really are susceptible to interest rates. So it was really an interest rate trade over the last 24 hours. And it was pretty big deal considering we saw yields drop very heavily. US 10 year was down three, US two year was down three as well. So massive drop offs. And I think a lot of it's already starting to get priced in. So be very careful when we approach 2024, what could be happening on these markets. Let's discuss S&P, effective yield rate gave us nothing to go off that there were bears anywhere around. The RSP, the equal weighted market just went ballistic, showing us that breadth is improving. But guess what? Breadth is still less than where we were during the August highs. And guess what? The S&P 500 has almost made a new high. The Dow has, et cetera, et cetera. So what this is telling us is there's catch up to be played if the markets do keep driving. And that catch up is more than likely going to be in these equal weighted. One thing I did notice is that if you take the range here and you consider this an inverse head and shoulders and you extrapolate it out, we are starting to get into that 152 territory. So it was a pretty good session. We might have a little bit more rally up here, but then maybe some weakness could come in. My favorite bond indicator is still really bullish. So that's a pretty good sign for the bulls out there. And treasuries were moving in. We actually almost got, I think we did, we got the gap fill. So there you go. Congratulations for treasury bond holders. We got the gap fill. We've been bullish on this for a little while. I've loved the volumes and look at the volumes. They're actually peaking up again, but I wouldn't be surprised to see something like that occur later on. Do remember forward guidance we put into one of our videos recently that showed the bonds across the board were really strong in the next year based on the types of history that we're seeing. And we'll put that into the next video again so you guys can see the data presented in a slightly different way. Put call ratios was dropping back down. We're looking for this to get a little bit lower as calls flood the system and puts go away. And Goldman Sachs actually came out and said it's one of the cheapest times to get a good night's rest, which 
basically was the idea of it's really cheap to buy put protection at this point on portfolios in comparison to the past history. Transportation's average, super strong week close. Look at that thing finally breaking through. That's a good sign for bulls out there. Home builders, as we mentioned, really strong weekly close, like a beast. Maybe it's going towards the new highs. Again, it's got no chill at this point. That's how it is. And the central bank liquidity had massive reinjections after having a pretty big fall off. Both the Fed and the central banks around the world putting in some work into supporting the markets as we break to these highs. So yeah, it's going to be difficult to go against the market. Copper, another one of ours, going towards four. You know, copper had a great session, great couple of days on it. So let's talk about where the bears could be and what they need to be looking at. Well, firstly, they need to push the dollar up. The US dollar has to start rising for the bears to be in full control. And at this stage, while we did have that beautiful little trade down in here towards the long, you know, as I said, this is pretty much supply. The problem is, is that everything in here doesn't give us any information. At this stage, we're just in consolidation to bear, really, because the trend is still down. And you'll notice that the daily was down on the session. The best news for dollar traders is going to be probably to set an alert above the high of the week and then see that break because we do have this big rejection. And one thing about these big wicks is sometimes they can actually hold some significant orders. So this wick, someone did try to buy it. Was that overexhaustion of the sell or is it a switch? Too early to tell here on this one, but dollar will be something that bears need to watch along with some of those other lead indicators. Now we move to gold, my favorite metal at the moment. Even more favorite than uh, than a copper. <laughs> um, yeah, I've, I've really, really liked this gold run. Uh, 2071, I guess it's nice to see it really push to those highs. I guess we're not quite at an all-time high yet. I'm not really too sure if it's, I think all-time highs over here, something a little bit higher. But this is kind of in line with what we think. I, I feel like at this stage, pullbacks will be met by bull demand for a little while for gold. And we still might be in a multi-month run here. I've also discussed the idea of 2,500 and 3,000 before over a couple of years. And it looks like it could do such a thing. And, and I guess the reason why, again, time frame will be absolutely critical here. But there are a, quite a few reasons. When you really look at it, of course, cup and handle traders will like this quite a lot. This is a fairly large cup and handle and you could drink a coffee out of this one or a tea or whatever your beverage of choice is because this thing here is is a pretty solid pattern and it is really moving towards the upside. Now, could it pull back? Absolutely, I believe it could. I just think the pullbacks for now should be met by bull demand. So that's something we're looking at on these charts and that was a very strong weekly close. So good times for gold, potentially moving forward. All right, let's move over to a few other things. We saw, of course, with the oil, we saw a couple of maybe disappointments in terms of the amount of barrels that were cut. The expectations were higher. We moved towards $80 a barrel and failed to hold it. So at this stage, still in consolidation on oil to even the downside. Um, do be careful here on the oil trade. You can see the weekly close is absolutely horrendous. So I'm going to say neutral down at this stage. And I don't really think that the positions in it are excellent at this stage. Let's move over to Tesla. It was a pretty sad day. It moved down, then it rallied back up. It did manage to hold its trend line, I guess, ultimately, even though it gapped underneath. I still think it's trapped within a zone. You know, the breakout at 246, 247 was, should have been a bit stronger. It really just got into this supply and failed. So at this stage, this is where the buyers are. You can see 232 is where buyers are. If they keep pushing it up, sure, next stop's going to be somewhere around the 265s, that kind of area. So yeah, pay attention to it if you wish. But there are probably better sectors and better stocks at the moment than Tesla on the charts. When you move over to bio, really nice move here. A couple of great sessions for biotech. Just one I've been looking at. There's so many great sectors at the moment. Obviously, gold, GDX, we've been following quite strongly. That's still not even really at its next take profit target, which could be around the 3270s. So some nice moves there for gold stocks. And I want to talk semiconductors because, of course, semiconductors could be setting ready for a flag as they consolidate, but we've seen large dark pool transactions. So this, along with the MAG7, are still super weak. And it means that NASDAQ is probably not where you want to be right now. If you have a look here, or at least not the big part of the NASDAQ, if you have a look here, that looks like a distribution and that rallies could be met by instant sales. So I would say, suggest look at the MAG7 stocks, pay attention to these ones because 
This is really what drove the market rally at the moment we're rotating. But if you're going to look for weakness, it could actually be in the big tech stocks. And, and realistically, I hate going for weakness in these stocks because semiconductors is the best market sector out there. It's really, really difficult. German DAX. Now, I just had to bring this in. That is one absolutely epic melt up. And I hope not too many people have been caught out by this one. 12.42%. So maybe percent doesn't look that crazy, but that is an absolute epic melt up. Very little pullbacks. Of course, we're approaching our next key resistance level. Do we know it's going to sell there? Absolutely not. We do know the percentage of people selling it are still really high, but that's starting to tip. Generally, when I see like leveraged retail traders go into the 90% shorts, that's actually where you do tend to see a bit of movement around. So be careful here because, yeah, we're going into a high. It's pretty much a take profit or a scale back target and certainly is occurring there. One of the markets that does look a little bit better or two of the markets look a little bit better were the FTSE and the Australian market. You can see the Australian market here has an inverse head and shoulders that broke through. So that's kind of predicting that the possibility of a 7,400 run could be going on on the Aussie market as we move further into materials and possibly even energy might come back. We'll see whether it can. Let's move to US 2000. This was a standout, most traded level hit. So I guess achieved one target if you were looking at this. Next target, maybe 1920 just underneath for the Russell 2000 and a very strong close to the week. Closed at its high, that's usually a pretty good sign that pullbacks will be met by bull demand. And uh, for people that have been looking for that rotation, which I saw quite a lot of people in the comments looking for it, that would have been a good vindication day. So well done if you've been doing that. Let's move over to Qs. Yeah, they were pretty crappy, really. I mean, I know that you know you might say, oh, look, look, Tom, you said it was going to be red yesterday. Well, we're talking about tech stocks in particular. Yeah, okay, they're up 0.29%. It wasn't a red session like the 35% stat said, but that's just a stat. Did we really see the weakness? Unfortunately, we didn't manage to... We actually saw weakness during the day and you would be almost looking at one point thinking, wow, this thing's actually going down because you can see here and then it just couldn't quite get back underneath. Around this area here is probably where you expect sellers to try and go for it if they want to go against trend. I'm not huge on trying to sell these types of markets on these day trade rent levels. I'd rather look at a swing or a Wyckoff distribution or something, but or use an option so at least you're partially protected and you can sleep better. But it, yeah, this level, you know, the Nasdaq is is back to where I would say if it's going to sell, this would be around that zone. You could look at the Mag Seven as well, and you know, it's just one of those ones that's like a coin flip that you're looking for a slightly better than one to one ratio on. Let's now move over to US 500 stocks. And of course, it was a pretty good session for the US 500. So many squiggly lines down here at 4,400-ish. But overall, it was a pretty strong close. I mean, it closed near its high. You get above that point. It kind of looks like it wants to keep melting up for now as we get rotation. And what you're looking for if you're a bear is you need this thing to push back underneath because really... It's just going to be too difficult to say that's exactly the level unless you're using some kind of protection patient. Like basically it would be a prediction level. So very, very difficult. Uh, if we do get too much higher, we close again weekly. I would say we're starting to push into the 4,700 territory. So if you think about it, we, we could be moving into the 4,800 actually, 4,800 moving forward. And that's probably the target for December at this stage. So 4,800, very possible for the end of December. Let's talk Bitcoin. That melt up doesn't keep stopping, does it? It just goes up a little bit, then down, then up a little bit, then down, then up a little bit, then down. We hit 39,000, I guess, for Bitcoin or just underneath it. 39,500 was one of our targets and 46,000. They remain pretty much the same things. Let's now move forward as we go through the next week and what data we need to be looking at. And as you can see, as we scroll through, we've got ISM services, PMI, Jolt's job openings, and we also have the non-farm employment week. So this means jobs numbers are coming. Have they weakened finally? Expectations are 185,000 new jobs, unemployment to stay stagnant at 3.9. Obviously, this is the number where we see a lot to do with the economy and what's going on. It's a lagging stat for sure, but the thing about it is that's what the Fed is also looking for. Will will they get their higher unemployment and jobs lost? It's, it's a weird world, isn't it? When they really want to try to kill the economy, which is what they've been trying to do now for what about a year or so. 
Hopefully you had a good week. If you did, make sure to subscribe, smash that like button. And do remember, we've got five charts coming your way over the weekend. Expect them before the Monday open. All you've got to do, links in the description down below. First name, email, it's that easy. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Hopefully you managed to catch some rotation this week. And probably that was one of the best trades along with the gold, just absolutely pressing those highs. I'm even surprised it managed to get 2070. My best case was 2050 this week, and it managed to do a little bit better. Thank you and bye for now.